Hey everybody, welcome back to another tutorial video here at Langmer Systems. I'm Jake, and today what I got for you is a video on cut charts. Now, what is a cut chart? Basically, a cut chart has a bunch of information to help you get started based on what kind of cut you're going to be making with MR1. What we've done here is we've taken over the years, we've kind of taken good notes, and we've figured out, you know, what is the best cutting conditions if you're going to be starting apart. So if you've got aluminum, if you've got steel, or if you've got something hard like stainless, this kind of gives you a rough general starting point to, for you to type in information as you're programming. So let's get to what that's going to look like once we get over to Fusion. So I'll whip up Fusion here, and what I've got is just a pretty simple part. It's just a little cube with a hex on it. Maybe it'll be used as a stamp. Anyway, it doesn't matter what the part is. Let's just pull up uh, some toolpaths for it. So what I got over here, I have an adaptive toolpath. So I'll just open it up and go to my tool section. And when I open up my tool libraries, I can come down to MR1 Tooling for Fusion, which is something we're going to have available for everybody. Uh, it'll match exactly what we sell online. So but if you can buy a tool from us, it's going to come in here all preloaded, ready to go. Uh, and I want a flat end mill for this. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to narrow it down to all flat end mills. Uh, let's say let's do a 3 8 end mill. And for this first one, we're going to say it's non-ferrous. Let's just say we have an aluminum block of this. So I'm going to double click 3 8 flat end mill non-ferrous. And so if we come over here to the side, it's going to auto-fill all of my spindle speeds, my feed rate, my ramp feed rate, all that good stuff It's going to auto-fill for me. And if I come over here to passes, it's also going to do my width of cut, which in Fusion is called the optimal load. It's going to do my maximum roughing step down, which is going to be my depth of cut. Uh, it's going to do all that for me. Easy peasy. And so all of this is going to match exactly what's in our cut chart. So if we come back, I can come over to non-ferrous for aluminum, brass, copper, plastic. Heck, you can even cut wood with non-ferrous. And so adaptive clearing. I've got a 3 8 end mill. I'm just going to follow it right along here. This is just a little description of the tool. Uh, so it's going to 8,000 RPM. My climb direction, cl uh, climb my cutting direction, climb or conventional. I'll put a quick little description here uh, showing the difference between climbing, uh, cutting, and conventional cutting. Generally, climb cutting is better. So not uh, all machines can do it in general, but of course, MR1 can go either way. Uh, so you always really want to climb whenever you can. Uh, we'll come over here to width of cut, 50,000. Uh, depth of cut, 3 8 and then our feed rate, 60 to 100. And then of course, helical ramp, which is if you'll be plunging or spiral cutting, stuff like that. And so really, this is all the information we need. So when I have it here, confusion is automatically filled in for me. Uh, so let's, let's go back to our tool. And let's say we're going to be doing something a little bit harder. Let's say we're going to be cutting some ferrous material. Maybe so we got some mild steel block instead of aluminum. So this will then automatically update everything I need. So just like before, all of our information gets automatically updated to steel. And so now we have a cutting rate of 70. I'll pop back over to the chart, come down to my softer ferrous materials. And if I zip on over, yeah, between 30 and 70. So that is at our high range of feed rate. Now, you might not always consider going at the high range. Uh, that's just what it comes default as in our tool library. But there are some certain things you want to keep in mind if you're going to be bumping up the feed rate a lot. You know, not everything is exactly stable when it comes to setting up a machine. Like if you're, maybe if you're only clamping on just a tiny bit of the block, or your tool's sticking way out, or you're expecting a lot of chatter in your part, you can go ahead and just bump down that feed rate to the minimum. And so the minimum right here, we're going to change that to 30. And then all my other feed rates will automatically update 30 as well. And this is just a nice way to kind of really ease into a cut that you're not familiar with or if you're going to be expecting a lot of chatter. And then when you get out to your machine and you start cutting your first part, and let's say this goes really well, it goes better than expected. And so on your next part that you load up, go ahead and bump up that feed rate a little bit. You know, that's, that's what we want to do as machinists, is we always want to look out for that continuous improvement. You know, we really want to find that nice balance between making a high quality part but also getting it done the most efficient way possible. I mean, you, 
you don't always have to focus on high speed, nothing else matters, it's all about the money. You really take your time with your first part and then dial it in. And then the really great thing about cut charts is that you can then take all the information that we have on this as a starting point and then you can make your own cut chart. So if you are cutting and you find out that, okay, the perfect cut for me is 50 inches per minute at some certain RPMs and this is the perfect cut for what I'm making, go ahead and put that down in your own chart. So whenever you make a cut just like that, you know exactly what to start it out as. This is gonna make programming much faster and you're gonna be more confident in your programming abilities if you already have your own cut chart and you know exactly what to put in your speeds and feeds. And this doesn't have to stop at one part, you know, you can, you can create a much bigger, a much more accurate chart than what we have here and then you can use that for all sorts of materials. And so this cut chart, really is a fantastic starting point whether you're new or whether you're experienced. You might be an experienced machinist but everything varies from machine to machine. You know if you're you're cutting on a hundred thousand dollar Akuma it's gonna be much different than cutting on this MR1 machine and so it's worth it to come in take a look see what all the different options are. So to find this cut chart you'll be able to, you guys will just be able to come up to our website for Langmuir Systems and if you come over to our support tab and the downloads, this is where you'll be able to find a lot of good, useful material that you can download from our website. Uh, it should be over here in the general downloads. Now, it's not here right now, but again, we'll use our imaginations. And suddenly, it will appear down here in the downloads. More than likely. If not, we'll be sure to let you guys know. So that's it. That's our cut control chart. It's a great way to help you get started great way to start get you a good foot in the door when it comes to entering in all of these data points and all this information in Fusion. It's really not as hard as it looks once you get a good grasp of it. So if you guys found this video informative, please consider leaving a like down below. It really helps us out a lot. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, you can leave those too. I'll sweep through every now and then and see if I can answer a couple of them. And if you want to see more content like this or more videos, please consider subscribing to our channel. You guys are the best, and thanks again for watching.